Hello, my little champions. I hope that you are doing great, and I welcome you all to score 360 out of 360 in Need Bio within 250 days. And today, we are going to start off a new chapter that is biotechnology principles and processes. And if you are someone who is preparing ardently for Need, you might be knowing that this chapter is very much important interesting and very easy to score so you should not be missing this chapter study with me properly okay and the first topic that i took is introduction to genetic engineering so biotechnology as a whole is a is a different thing for you okay uh, which you see in 12th standard textbook which you have not studied before so obviously there might be chances that you might have a lot of confusion so to avoid all kind of confusions i have made i'm going to make a video over here which will include this the just the basics of this particular chapter okay and i'll be also uh, i'll be also giving you questions from the basics of this chapter okay so you you'll be feeling so confident while doing all this thing now what all did we cover uh, in the entire 55 days children we spoke about sexual reproduction in flowering plants and we ended in evolution so seven chapters down within just 55 days that's a huge task we also solved questions we did mock tests so it's a good thing we should all tap our backs if you also were in this journey with me now if you want the pdf of the same children you can join our whatsapp channel where you get access to all the pdf now the number of questions from this chapter was five in the previous year so five into four four for all the correct answers you get 20 marks from this single chapter can you believe that so 20 marks as an aspirant for neat is not something small it's very huge number so you should not be missing on it be careful about whatever i'm teaching you over here just put all your ears your heart over here and study okay starting with the very infamous question what does biotechnology deal with why are we studying this chapter basically you have bio word coming in biotechnology biology and technology so basically you might be putting technology into biology you are doing something with it something with biology so over here i'll say for example there is an organism which is producing insulin for me okay insulin is a human hormone is produced by us okay and some other organisms but i want that bacteria to produce insulin for me because my body is not able to produce that much amount of insulin so over here i have to bring out certain changes in their dna and that is biotechnology children where i am going to bring out certain changes in different organisms for my usefulness i am i want that product from them which is why i'm doing this and this is what you mean by biotechnology it might not just be that i want the proteins i want with the product it could be just that i want to bring out a change and see what is the reaction to that particular change and it could be used for preparing more drugs more by drugs i mean these uh, medicines okay not the drugs like weeds okay so basically for production of more drugs and things like that which is really useful for us fine now biotechnology deals with techniques of using live organisms or enzymes from organisms to produce products and processes useful to watch children and humans now in this sense making curd that is biotechnology in curd what are we doing basically curd has a bacteria that is lactobacillus this lactobacillus is making doing the work for us that is turning the milk into curd you get it so that is biotechnology i am using that particular organism for bringing curd now making bread or wine bread again what do you use you use yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae in wine what do you use you use yeast fermentation is happening over there so over here you are using the organisms microorganisms for production of products that we want children and this is biotechnology now going ahead which are all micro mediated processes could also be thought as a form of biotechnology okay however it is used in restricted sense today to refer to such of these processes which use genetically modified organisms to achieve the same on a larger scale but nowadays we are not talking about these small small things nowadays we are talking about large scale things for example i have a big container and i want to make more amount of proteins this and that and this is done on a large scale and this is what biotechnology deals with today in today's generation now further further many other processes techniques are also included under biotechnology for example in vitro fertilization leading to a test tube baby so over there also what are you doing children in in vitro fertilization you are taking the egg you are taking the sperm uh, outside in the laboratory conditions you are making them fuse again this is not something natural over here also you need technological aspects right is it occurring naturally you sit and watch the sperm and the egg coming together and forming the zygote is it so no so this is also biotechnology synthesizing a gene and using it whenever you make a new gene and whenever you use it this is that whenever you make a vaccine what is vaccine children 
vaccine is what basically in our body we should be having a normal procedure to uh, be safe okay but we are artificially providing it to our body okay where we are putting attenuated organisms inside our body to give out a reaction so that next time that organism actually comes in our body will be able to fight with that so all these things that you see becomes a part of biotechnology now the european federation of biotechnology efb has given a definition of biotechnology that encompasses both traditional view and modern molecular biotechnology the definition given by esb goes as well the integration of natural sciences and organism cell parts organism cells or their parts thereof and molecular analogs for products and services this is what you mean by biotechnology kind of a big and weird topic uh, what's say a weird definition but i hope you got it it's just bio biology and technology coming together for bringing out more and more products which is useful for to us human beings now okay so what exactly do you need in the case of genetic engineering and whatever i said that i need an organism to produce this and then that product is used and this and blah 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 things so over here first thing that we need is to learn a host cell what do you mean by host cell for example malarial parasite plasmodium i taught you right this stays inside my body divides inside my body uses my machinery a lot of things happens so i am the host i am the host for that particular organism so here i have to select a host cell this host cell can be anything but i am probably selecting one particular cell that is known as e coli or escherichia coli this is a bacteria my dear children this is a bacteria this is a prokaryote okay now why have i chosen this particular thing because e coli has its own dna e coli ayyo just a second it looks dirty so i'm just cleaning it up and making it properly okay so uh this thing that you see it's e coli and e coli has its own genetic material okay has its own genetic material that is usually in the form of circular dna now apart from it also e coli this is the chromosomal dna that it has okay this is what the chromosomal dna it has chromosomal dna it has which stores all the information for making proteins and everything now apart from this there is a unique feature about prokaryotes they also have certain extra chromosomal dna that is extra dna which is there which is not of much use they do not code for proteins and stuff like that just there okay they just there and uh, they are also circular in nature they are also circular so this i made like this but the rest i am making like this okay and what do you call them you call them children plasmids these are what plasmids are what extra chromosomal dna do they code for proteins no proteins they do not code for any proteins fine so they are also there now why is ma'am telling all about this basically when i say that i am going to use the host machinery for bringing about changes and uh, for producing a lot of things basically i am going to bring about changes in their dna i am going to use their dna in some other other manner how when when i'll tell you so basically suppose this is my dna okay and in my dna i have a gene i have a gene which is coding for insulin but due to some issues my body is not producing enough amount of insulin which is why i want artificial form of insulin being produced why do you need insulin children insulin basically captures all the glucose that is there in the blood and converts it into glycogen converts it into glycogen that is a use of insulin so people who do not have enough production of insulin what happens the glucose still remains like that and their blood glucose level increases which is why they have a condition that is known as diabetes now me who is not having enough amount of glucose uh, insulin it will be a problem for me to sustain because my blo blood glucose level will go high so i want insulin my body is not producing who can produce it for me probably another organism and i can take this insulin artificially with the help of injection so you might have heard of insulin shots so people who have diabetes uncontrolled diabetes apart from taking medications they also take insulin shots so what is this insulin shots basically the insulin hormones has been provided artificially in them okay now how do you produce it artificially the thing that i can do is i can take this particular 
gene which is the gene of my interest now what do i call this gene this is gene of interest which i want and i can put this gene of interest over here in the host cell and now what happens children every time they will undergo replication every time the host cell dna you know dna undergoes replication okay undergoes replication and then you get another two cells having the copy of this right so dna replication happens it gives the replicated copy to both of them and now there are two different cells now this also will again divide and the thing goes on goes on goes on goes on goes on now whenever dna replication is happening you are you are taking that gene also which is of my interest suppose okay so i am changing going to change a color because over here also i made it green so i am going to make it in red this is my gene of interest okay this is co this is coding for insulin now i can put the this particular gene of interest first thing that i have to do is i have to cut it i have to cut it over here how can i cut it how can i cut this gene of interest basically with the help of these enzymes that you see over here those are known as restriction endonucleases what do you call them restriction endonucleases endo means inside nucleases means nucleic acid okay nucleases mean they cut okay what do they cut children they cut they cut the nucleic acid aces whenever the that term comes that understand that it's for cutting so nucleases as in they cut nucleic acid and they are going to cut the inner surface of nucleic acid so over here if i want to cut this end and this end so this is the external side right so this is not done by endonucleases endonucleases basically if this is a dna strand i am going to cut the middle portion of it i want to cut the inside portion of it that's when i use restriction endonucleases got it so i use enzymes that is restriction endonucleases to cut the gene of my interest that is this particular gene fine i took it the gene of interest i got it now what do i do i can put it in the chromosomal dna over here or i can put it over here if i put it, it over here then probably it is going to affect the escherichia coli is working also in some other way because obviously that is that particular segment of dna is coding for proteins i don't want to mess it up there instead what i can do is that these extra chromosomal dna which is lying over here chumma i can just use them so what do i do i take a plastid okay so not a plastid a plasmid okay i take a plasmid over here okay so this was the actual thing they were double stranded they were coiled now with the help of restriction endonucleases and everything i basically cut some part of it so let me cut ayo everything went off just a second why does this happen to me always okay initially it was like this now what i did i cut it the plasmid and i put my gene of interest over here i put my gene of interest over here okay now this process this process of fixing things over here of making them joined over here this is done by another enzyme which is known as dna ligase so dna ligase it ligates ligates means it joins things so dna ligase is used for joining the segment of dna children this will give you a basic give you a basic idea of a lot of things so understand okay now i put it over here now i want whenever this plasmid is going to undergo replication i want this particular strand also to undergo replication but you have to note a very important thing the dna should be having a site a very important site which will allow replication to happen and that site is known as origin of replication or ori so if this plasmid does not have origin of replication then this plasmid would not be undergoing uh what's a replication so we need an origin of replication and we choose accordingly so suppose the plasmid's origin of replication is over here plasmid's origin of replication is over here then from here the replication will be starting and now each things that you would be getting the copies that will be getting will be like this all of them children all of them will be having the copy of dna that you also incorpor incorporated now again you know that this is prokaryotic uh, dna that we have over here okay it will undergo transcription 
What do you mean by transcription? Basically, this DNA will form mRNA. This mRNA will later form what? Proteins and this process is known as translation. So, formation of mRNA from DNA it is known as transcription that will happen and now mRNA will say that this proteins have to be made and that is known as translation. So, at the end I am getting my proteins that I need. At the end of translation I am getting my proteins that I need that is known as insulin. That is known as insulin. Okay. Now, this process that you saw over here, it is not a one step process. Obviously, there are a lot of things over here. Now, E. coli, you have to make your DNA get inside, you have to take the plasmid. So, over here, you have to make pores over its body. So, there are different, different techniques involved in it. This is just an overview of the chapter. This is just the overview of the chapter. At least this thing you should be knowing. So, first thing, what did we have children? We had the host cell. Okay, host cell has its own DNA that is chromosomal DNA which codes for proteins and things like that. Then it has extra chromosomal DNA as well. What do you call them? You call them plasmids. Okay, and plasmids basically they are not coding for any proteins, they are just there. Okay, they are not coding for any proteins, they are just there. Now we have the host, uh, now we have our cell. Okay, our cell has our DNA and this DNA will have a segment, a gene which will be coding for the proteins that is of my interest which is insulin. This is the gene of interest. What do I do children? First, I use restriction endonucleases that is the enzymes which would come exactly and cut over this particular point. Okay, it will not cut anywhere else. It will cut directly over here and now I have my gene of interest. Now what I have children? Now I have my gene of interest. This gene of interest will be taken and put it into the plasmid. So, for before putting it into the plasmid, the plasmid portion has to be cut like this and then you are putting your own DNA over here. And you are fixing things, you are ligating the DNA, our DNA and the plasmid DNA with the help of another enzyme which is known as DNA ligase my dear children, DNA ligase. Now this will again, this is a plasmid, so this will replicate, this thing will replicate itself obviously, so that involves DNA polymerase, polymerase is involved for replication, okay. Now after replicating there will be so many copies of the DNA strand that I have over here. This DNA obviously will undergo something that is known as transcription will help in the formation of mRNA. This mRNA will later code for protein and hence at the end I got my protein. This particular protein is taken up and then used as an insulin shot over there. So this is the overview of the chapter. Okay. Now I think if you read the NCRT it will be a lot more easy for you to understand. Chalo, let us read the NCRT. So, techniques involved in biotechnology, mm -hmm. over here, the thing that you studied, no, you, yes, what do you call this procedure as, I said about a lot of things, a whole together, what do you call this procedure as, you call this procedure as recombinant DNA. technology. What do you call it? You call it recombinant DNA technology or RDT. Okay. Apart from that, what do you call this procedure as? You also call this procedure as genetic engineering. You also call this procedure as genetic engineering my dear children because you are involving genes over here and engineering because you are needing the human help over here to do a lot of things okay that is what is known as genetic engineering recombinant DNA technology why because you are combining two different types of DNA for your own good and you are bringing out something else so that is why you are saying it is recombinant DNA technology or RDT okay now going ahead over here so there are two techniques involved in biotechnology among many the two core techniques that enable birth of modern biotechnology is genetic engineering what do you mean by that techniques to alter the chemistry of genetic material DNA or RNA to introduce these into host organisms and thus change the phenotype of the host organism what do you mean by phenotype basically the physical appearance or physical character so whenever you are messing up with the gene when you are messing up with the DNA basically you are making for example over here the E. coli was normal I put the plasmid and the plasmid while being replicated or while being transcribed or while being translated, it is now producing something that is known as insulin. So you are bringing out certain changes in genes, so you call genotypic changes. You call this genotypic changes and these changes, genotypic changes are bringing out certain changes in their physical character, they are now producing insulin. So this is phenotypic changes. So these are what phenotypic changes my dear children. Okay, going ahead, bioprocess engineering that is the next thing, maintenance of sterile 
microbial contamination free ambience in chemical engineering processes to enable growth of only desired microbes eukaryotic cell in large quantities for the manufacture of biotechnological products like antibiotics vaccines and enzymes what do you mean by bio process engineering over here you're maintaining you're making sure that whatever situation you are growing the microbes in it is sterile it is contamination free such that only the good bacteria whatever desired microbes are there they could only grow and this is very much important for what for production of antibiotics vaccines and enzymes because yes it is used in our body yeah so that is what you mean by bio process engineering and this is what you mean by genetic engineering which we are doing for products done now do you know the likely fate of a piece of DNA which is somehow transferred into an alien organism? Most likely this piece of DNA would not be able to multiply itself in the progeny cells of the organism. So I am just thinking that okay there is an E. coli and I am just putting my DNA inside like that. I am not seeing whether plasmid is there. I am not seeing whether I am incorporating into the DNA of the uh, E. coli. Okay, so this is the E. coli which has its own DNA. Okay, and now I am putting my DNA over here. My DNA won't be able to replicate. Do you think my DNA, if I'm just putting it randomly like that, it will be able to replicate? No. But now, when it is getting integrated into the genome of the recipient, now when it is integrated into the genome of the recipient, that is over here in the chromosomal DNA also you can put. In the chromosomal DNA also you can put, but you are not putting it generally. But if you are putting it, it's okay. Fine. Suppose you have put it over here. Then what will happen, children? This particular gene of interest will replicate. Why? Because over here also this chromosomal DNA will also have ORI that is origin of replication. So why a normal DNA does not undergo replication? Because it is not incorporated into the genome which has the origin of replication. I told you if origin of replication is not there, replication would not be started. And if replication is not started, this particular strand of DNA won't be get replicated, won't show its character at all. Okay. So, uh, it may multiply and be inherited along with the host DNA if it is put over here in the genome. Why? This is because alien piece of DNA has become a part of the chromosome which has the ability to replicate. You know the chromosome has the ability to replicate, the DNA has the ability to replicate. So, it has to be a part of the genome then only things can happen children. Now, in a chromosome there is a specific DNA sequence that is known as origin of replication which is responsible for initiating replication. This origin of replication is a place where DNA polymerase comes and binds. Okay. So, if there is no place like this DNA polymerase will be like Haha, where should I stand I, okay probably I should not do replication I'll just go away so that is the thing so origin of replication is very much important therefore for multiplication of any alien piece of DNA in an organism it needs to be a part of the chromosome which has specific sequence that is known as origin of replication thus an alien DNA is linked with the origin of replication so that this alien piece of DNA can replicate and multiply itself in the host organism this can also be known as cloning okay now once it is rep now once it is put inside integrated into that this particular DNA strand will undergo replication will undergo replication will undergo replication and now make multiple copies this is known as children cloning what do you call this particular procedure as? You call it as cloning. A cloning means what? You are making multiple identical copies. You are making multiple identical copies of what the template DNA that you have over here. Cool? Works? Chalo. Next. First recombinant DNA, yes, now that is very important thing. So I am just picking all the things that I have studied, uh, taught you, okay. And over here you have the recombinant DNA, this is not something that I have taught, we have to learn it. So there were two scientists children, one was Stanley Cohen and other one was Herbert Boyer, okay. Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer, you have to remember their names. Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyan. I hope I am writing the spelling correctly. Boyer. I always miss it up. Boyer. Okay. And they did something in the year 1972. What was that something? So they had a bacteria which you might be knowing really really well. It's uh, Salmonella typhi. Do you know it? Have you heard of Salmonella typhi? Well it says that <laughs> I am the one that causes typhoid. Okay, so you know Salmonella typhi will also have its own DNA over here. 
okay and then he took another bacteria which is e coli so he took another bacteria don't go with the shape okay i'm just randomly making it so you have e coli as well that's its own dna okay now he did something with the both of them salmonella typhi and e coli let's read it and learn the construction of the first recombinant dna emerged from the possibility of linking a gene encoding antibiotic resistance with a native plasmid of salmonella okay <sighs> salmonella typhi memory or salmonella typhi stanley cohen and herbert boyer accomplished this in 1972 by isolating the antibiotic resistant gene by cutting out a piece of dna from plasmid which was responsible for conferring antibiotic resistance so there was a gene okay just understand this there was a segment of dna which is known as gene over here and this was this particular gene was coding for anti biotic resistance what do you mean by antibiotic resistance that is for example i am a bacteria and over me i have put some anti uh, what say antibiotics but still i am able to survive i am able to resist that particular antibiotic how because i have the gene which would let me survive in this so basically there is antibiotic resistant genes in me gene in me which is helping me to survive so any antibiotic if it tries to kill me i will be killed because i have that particular antibiotics resistance gene over here okay so for example um, any antibiotic you take ampicillin is an antibiotic drug so this anti um, ampicillin okay some guy is there okay he is putting uh, antibiotic on me okay that is ampicillin treating me with ampicillin but i am salmonella type when i am saying that <laughs> i have the ampicillin antibiotic resistant gene over here so whatever you do i'm not going to get killed so that is the thing okay so that is antibiotic resistant gene so i have taken this particular gene which is there okay this is the gene of interest what is this children this is the gene of interest and i'm now i'm going to do something with it so i took it from a plasmid another plasmid had this particular thing antibiotic resistant gene so i took it by cutting endonucleases i took it now the cutting of dna at specific location become possible because the discovery of molecular scissors restriction enzyme and this is also very much important the restriction enzymes that you saw restriction endonuclease that i taught about you call them molecular scissors molecular scissors why molecular as in dna rna they are dealing with that and scissors as in they are going to cut so molecular scissors you call them restriction enzymes and cutting of dna was possible because of them okay we want to cut the dna specific location we cannot cut it from a normal scissors right so this was possible because of them and it's a very important neat question my dear children so many times this question has come now the cut piece of dna was then linked with the plasmid dna this plasmid dna acts as vector uh, vector to transfer the piece of dna attached to it you probably know that mosquito acts as a vector okay so basically now this plasmid is going to act like a vector so i took this antibiotic resistance and i am going to put it in a plasmid and this plasmid i am going to put in some other organism got it i am going to put this plasmid in some other organism fine so what is this plasmid acting as it is acting as a vector because basically i am able to pass down things with the help of this particular thing this is why i call this particular plasmid as a vector it is helping me pass things so so i say mosquito is a vector in the case of malaria why do i say mosquito is a vector in the case of malaria because mosquito is taking the plasmodium and transferring it to me so who is the mosquito over here mosquito is the vector over here also the plasmid which is taking the gene of interest and transfer into some other organism this is a vector okay so in same way a plasmid can be used as a vector to deliver an alien piece of dna into the host organism okay still story is not completed yet so the linking of antibiotic resistant gene with the plasmid vector became possible with the enzyme dna ligase which acts uh, acts on the cut dna molecules and join their ends i told you if there is a plasmid there is a foreign dna if i want to join what do i need dna ligase this makes a new combination of circular autonomously replicating dna created in vitro and is known as recombinant dna now this one where you have the plasmid dna and you have your gene of interest over here what do you call this whole set as you call this as re combinant dna my dear children okay when this dna is transferred into escherichia coli a bacterium closely related to salmonella it could replicate using the new host dna polymerase enzyme okay and make multiple copies the ability to multiply uh, multiply copies of resistant gene in e coli was called cloning of antibiotic resistant gene okay 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 listen to me carefully okay so little back story let's go back okay over here i said i had salmonella typhi right salmonella typhi has its plasmid i'll 
Okay, I am taking this plasmid out for some time. Okay, where can I take it out? Over here, I will take it out. I am cutting it and I am putting the gene of interest that is the antibiotic resistant gene over here. This is what the antibiotic resistant gene. I am putting ARG, chumma, I am putting like that. Okay, plasmid belongs to salmonella typhi. This antibiotic resistant gene is from somewhere else. I am taking the antibiotic resistant gene and I am putting over here. Now, should I put this plasmid back onto into the salmonella typhi and then treat it with ampicillin and see whether it is working or not? No, I cannot do that. Then in that case, what will happen children? One salmonella typhi if I get like that, then it will keep on replicating and now it will be antibiotic resistant. I do not want this guy to be antibiotic resistant. So, what do I do? I just want to see whether it will work like that only in it. So, I take a closely related species of salmonella typhi that is E. coli cousins. Okay. Now, I put this plasmid over here. I put this plasmid over here. So, what will happen? Now, it will look something like this. So, this is Escherichia coli with the plasmid and over here, I have my gene of interest as well. Okay. I have my gene of interest as well. Now, what will happen? This guy will replicate this plasmid, will replicate over here and I will get multiple copies and this process is known as cloning. Now, to see if it is antibiotic resistant, what do I do children? This E. coli is there with the plasmid, it has antibiotic resistance gene. Now, if I treat it with ampicillin and if it is able to survive, that means, that means what basically this antibiotic resistant gene is working over there. And this was done by Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer in the year 1972. That's how, okay, that is how they came to the knowledge. Okay, this is something possible. So, they made the first recombinant DNA and this is what you see over here. They made the first recombinant DNA using the antibiotic resistant gene and the plasmid of the Salmonella typhi and they then put it in the Escherichia coli and wanted it to divide by itself and this process is known as cloning my dear children. So now each clone which will be formed will be antibiotic resistant. So this particular E. coli will be antibiotic resistant. Okay, specific antibiotic resistance, not like all the antibiotic, it will be resistance to all the antibiotic. No, it's not like that. I'm talking about specific. For example, this was an ampicillin antibiotic resistant gene. It's just resistant to ampicillin, no one else. So, they did it and they found it. Okay, so do you credit to them for this and their name is written in the front page of the chapter. I must say that you should be having a quick read of it as well. Okay, so before the chapter begins, before the whole unit of biotechnology begins, they have written it over there. You should be reading it. It's important. Questions do come from that also. Okay, so yes. So yeah, over here in this particular paragraph, they have told about this. They have also said that cloning, they have also said that cutting of DNA has been possible because of molecular scissors, that is restriction enzymes. And then they said that vectors are what? Vectors are those things which would help transfer an alien piece of DNA into some other organism. So this plasmid is acting as a vector because it is helping in the transfer of this particular DNA strand from organism 1 to organism 2 over here. Cool. This is the host organism where things are getting transferred. Now, apart from that, DNA ligases use was also mentioned. So, over here, if you want the DNA strands to come together, you need the help of DNA ligase which would join them. Now, what? This makes a new combination of circular autonomous replicated DNA. You call them recombinant DNA. When this DNA is transferred to Escherichia coli, the same thing happens. As I said, it multiplies. So, will you remember 1972, Stanley Cohen and uh, who Boer? Even I forgot. How can that happen? Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer. Yes. Okay. Now, basic steps of genetic engineering and with this we are going to end the basic of this particular thing and then we will be moving on to questions. Chalo. So, you can say you can just sum up. First thing, what are the basic steps? In identification of DNA with desirable gene. Yes, my insulin gene, I identified it. Okay. First, I have to find the DNA with the desired gene. So, this is my DNA, desired gene but first thing, I have to find the DNA. Next, introduction of the identified DNA into the host. Now, Jane, I have identified. I am now putting it into the host with the help of plasmid or whatever I have over here with the help of a vector. Now, maintenance of introduced DNA in the host and transfer of DNA to its progeny. I will maintain it in the host itself and then I will let it clone or basically replicate and make more copies as that each E. coli which arises from it will be having this particular copy my dear children that's the simplest thing of genetic engineering works it's simple no it's interesting it's simple i feel it's very interesting thing no you're messing up with the dna that is something huge so we have come so far with science 
ayyum sorry 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 there is one more thing that we have to study okay so um, you know hybridization for example i have uh, got a great plant over there this plant has great flowers and i have got another plant which does not have great flowers but has good disease resistance okay so there is plant a which has very beautiful little flowers okay and there is plant b which is which does not have that beautiful flowers not very big flowers but it is highly disease resistant so what do people do they make it clone and then you have got a hybrid you have got a hybrid which has both the features so now it is flowering well and it is also disease resistant now this is known as hybridization where you are making a hybrid over here but you are not going into the genes and making them clone like that nothing like that you are just taking the plants and making them breed the dominant one will show up now in this case what happens is that it's not actually done i cannot say it is not done properly i'll rather say basically over here i'm not very specific okay the genes which i do not want is also getting passed on the genes which i want that is also getting passed on so but here the specificity is not there i'm not saying that okay only the desirable genes has to go so there will be some other genes which might not be desirable in this particular plant but when i talk about genetic engineering i am taking a desired gene nothing else in this particular strand of dna i'm just taking this particular area which has my desired gene nothing else so can i expect that there will be something bad happening over here no i'll expect that everything good is happening over here you get it that is the use of genetic engineering failure would be less comparatively when you talk about traditional hybridization you're giving a uh, you're not giving a specific view over there okay you're not giving a specific view over there so you probably appreciate the advances of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction the former provides opportunities for variation you know sexual reproduction gives out more variation because you have two parents involved so obviously variation will be double dna from this dna from this combination different type of dna you have more variation the former provides opportunities for variation and formulation of unique combination of genetic setup some of which may be beneficial to the organism as well as the population now asexual reproduction preserves the genetic information while sexual reproduction permits variation you know sexual reproduction is something that will be permitting variation it will let variation happen now traditional hybridization procedures used in plant and animal breeding very often lead to inclusion and multiplication of undesirable gene along with the desirable gene so when traditional hybridization happens children there are higher chances that you are multiplying undesirable genes along with the genes that you are desiring to have okay but the techniques of genetic engineering which includes creation of recombinant dna use of gene, gene cloning and gene transfer overcomes this limitation and allows use of isolate use allows us to isolate uh, and introduce only one or a set of desirable genes without introducing undesirable genes into the target organism and that makes the huge difference okay this is exact thing that i said i'm getting tired i don't know why now time for questions where i won't be solving it's you who would be solving tell me the answer for the same and then at the end of the video i'll be solving with you guys chalo the dna molecule to which the gene of interest is integrated for cloning is the dna molecule to which the gene of interest is integrated is known as what that is a question this came in 2015 such an easy question for mark okay next question The cutting of DNA at specific locations become possible with the discovery of what? 2015. I told you this important neat question. What was responsible for helping in cutting off the DNA strands, my dear children? What was it? Tell me. Okay. Third, manipulation of DNA in genetic engineering became possible due to the discovery of what? Again. manipulation of dna as in you want to change you want to do something with your genes and things like that it became possible when what was discovered which made everything possible this came in 2002 tell me the answer fourth which one of the following techniques made it possible to genetically engineer 
लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म जेनेटिकली इंजीनियर लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म चिल्ड्रन जेनेटिकली और इंजीनियरिंग लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म वॉट वॉज अ टेक्निक दट वॉज यूज रिकॉमन डी एन आर टेक्निक्स एक्सरे डिफ्रैक्शन हेवियर आइस ऑफ लेवलिंग हाइब्रोडाइजेशन टेल मी दी आंसर रीड द क्वेश्चन केयरफुली एंड देन ओनली गो हैड ओके नाउ फिफ्थ विच आर द फॉलोइंग ऑर्गेनिज इज रिलेटेड टू जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रिया प्लास्मिड्स गॉलजी बॉडी लाइसोसोम्स easy for those of you children who are confused with plasmid is not an organelle well we consider this as an organelle for prokaryotes okay so you can tell me the answer chalo let me try to do all the questions and you say if your answers are correct or not the dna molecule to which the gene of interest is integrated for cloning you call this as a vector remember plasmid was a vector this is the plasmid you're putting the gene of interest over here and this plasmid is being put to some other organism basically it is acting as a vector which carries this gene of interest so this is a vector the cutting of dna at specific location happens because of the enzyme which are known as restriction enzymes they are also known as the molecular scissors what do you call them children molly cular scissors now manipulation of dna in genetic engineering became possible due to the discovery of manipulation you are manipulating the dna as when you say you are manipulating a human mean what do you mean basically you're bringing out certain changes in them okay so in the dna if you bring out certain changes it was become it had become possible because of what what is the initial thing that was needed again molecular scissors so restriction endonucleases were the thing that was primarily needed only if you cut and then you can paste that is the second thing so dna ligase use comes later first you have to cut it so that was becoming possible because of restriction endonucleases okay now which one of the following techniques made it possible to genetically engineer living organisms genetically engineer you might go with hybridization but let me tell you it's wrong it's not hybridization in hybridization you are not genetically engineering basically you're taking the plants which have good varieties and you're trying to merge them that's it when you're genetically engineering you're talking about recombinant dna techniques this becomes the answer okay now which of the following organelles is related to genetic engineering it is the plasmid children it acts as a vector most of the times this is found in prokaryotes then easy no now are you ready for the homework well if in, even if you are not ready i have to give you the homework and you have to do it because it is needed okay so this is the homework it's a very cute little homework the sequence that controls the copy number of the linked dna in the vector is termed copy number as in something that helps in replication which increases the copy number as a number of copies that is being made so what is that sequence that controls the copy number of the linked dna in the vector tell me what do you call this selector mark selectable marker or i said palindromic sequence recognition site okay and one more thing uh, what do you call what do you mean by recognition site coming over here coming over here so this is the homework okay please do it and uh, i want to explain something uh, okay so these restriction endonucleases they only cut at recognition sites the sites where they cut they are known as recognition sites and it's very unique for all the enzymes so you do not have just one restriction endonucleases you have multiple of them and they have different different recognition sites where they cut the dna cool so that's all my dear children i hope you have got the basic idea of this particular chapter i helped you with that and if you think this was useful do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also be really really happy because you have us who would help you really really well but you also have to study really hard i'll be really really happy i'm using the word really so much so yeah i would be really happy to see you crack neat uh and the day i am waiting for that when you come and comment that ma'am it's it's really good we cracked neat that will be the happiest day so i'm just waiting for that i'm really proud of you remember that even on the days where you're not studying i'm really proud of you because i know you will try okay you have that will power to try and do not lose that okay so that's all bye bye take care